worldwide, more than 600,000 people go missing. Some intentionally, some mysteriously, and whatnot. In today's case, we will be covering the disappearance of Tara Kaliko. But before we get into it, Hello, and welcome to the Murder House Radio Show. I'm your host, X. On this show, we will be covering serial killers, killers, mass shooters, disappearances, true crime, and the most deplorable things and people in history. All that good dark stuff. The Murder House Radio Show will be a radio show slash podcast. I'll be uploading videos every Friday at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Once you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification button and select all to get all notifications if you are viewing on YouTube. Hit the follow button if you are listening on a podcasting platform. So sit down, get comfortable, grab some coffee or whatever your preferred beverage is, turn off the lights, and enjoy the show. On Tuesday, September 20th, 1988, Coleco left her home at around 9.30 a.m. to go on her daily bike ride along New Mexico State Road 47. She rode that route almost every morning and was sometimes accompanied by her mom, Pat Dolly. However, Dolly stopped riding with Coleco after she fell and had been stalked by a motorist. She advised her daughter to think about carrying a mace, pepper spray, but Coleco rejected the idea, possibly a fatal mistake. On the morning of Coleco's disappearance, she had told Dole to come and get her if she was not home by noon, as she had plans to play tennis with her boyfriend at 12.30. When her daughter did not return, Dole went to search for her along Coleco's usual bike route, but could not find her. She then contacted the police. Pieces of Coleco's Sony Walkman and cassette tape were later discovered along her route. Dole believed that she might have dropped them in an attempt to mark her trail. Several people saw Coleco riding her bike, which has never been found. Nobody witnessed her possible abduction, although several witnesses observed a light-colored pickup truck, possibly a 1953 Ford, with a camper shell following closely behind her. On the 15th of June, 1989, a Polaroid photo of an unidentified young woman and boy, both gagged with black duct tape and seemingly bound, was discovered in the parking lot of a convenience store in Port St. Joe, Florida. The woman who found the photo said that it was in a parking space where a white windowless Toyota cargo van had been parked when she had arrived at the store. She said that the van was being driven by a man with a mustache who appeared to be in his 30s. Police set up roadblocks to intercept this vehicle, but the man has never been identified. According to Polaroid officials, the picture had to have been taken after May 1989 because the particle film used in the photograph was not available until that date. The photo was broadcasted on a current affair in July, and Dole was contacted by friends who had seen the show and thought the woman resembled her daughter. Relatives of Michelle Hanley, also from New Mexico, who had disappeared in April 1988, saw the episode and said they believed he was the boy in the photo. Dole and Hanley's parents both met with investigators and examined the photo. Dole said that she was convinced it was her daughter. She also noted that a scar on the woman's leg was identical to one that her daughter had received in a car accident. In addition, a paperback copy of V.C. Andrews' My Sweet Adrien, said to be one of Chloe's favorite books, can be seen laying next to the woman. 
Scotland Yard analyzed the photo and concluded that the woman was indeed Coleco. But a second analysis by the Los Alamos National Laboratory disagreed. An FBI analysis of the photo was inconclusive. Hanley's mother said that she was almost certain it was Michael in the Polaroid. The identification of the boy in the photograph as Hanley is considered highly unlikely. His remains were discovered in June 1990 in the Zuni Mountains, about 7 miles, which is 11 kilometers, from his family's campsite from which he had disappeared, and 75 miles, 121 kilometers, from where Coleco disappeared. Police believed that Hanley wandered off and subsequently died of exposure. In 1998, Coleco was declared officially dead. A judge ruled her death a homicide. In 2008, Rene Riviera, the sheriff of Felicia County, reported that he received information that two teenagers had accidentally hit Coleco with a truck, panicked and subsequently killed her. According to to Riviera, the boys who knew Coleco drove up behind her in a truck, and some form of accident followed. Coleco later died, and those responsible covered up the crime. Riviera stated that he knew the names of those involved, but that without a body, he could not make a case. He did not release the evidence that led him to the conclusion. Coleco's stepfather, John Dole, said that the sheriff should not have made these comments if he's not willing to arrest anyone, and that strong circumstantial evidence should be enough for a conviction. Yeah, don't open your mouth if uh, you can't give conclusive evidence. But as far as uh, circumstantial evidence being enough, I wouldn't think so. Not for murder, at least. In October 2013, a six-person task force was established to reinvestigate the Coleco disappearance. As of 2017, no arrests have been made and the case remains open. On October 1st, 2019, the FBI announced they are offering a reward up to $20,000 for precise details leading to the identification or location of Terra. The information leading to the arrest or conviction of those responsible for her disappearance. So they're offering information for her location and the arrest of the individuals involved. In September 2021, the Valiciana County Sheriff's Office and the New Mexico State Police issued a statement that they have a new lead in the case and that the focus of a sealed warrant of an unknown private residence located within the county has been issued. However, no further details were provided. In the event that Tara is still alive, she would be 54 years old today. But yeah, I do find these cases extremely interesting. The disappearances always baffle me. How someone can just seemingly up and vanish without a trace or little of a trace and never be found especially like those 411 cases i covered uh, a little bit ago a few episodes ago well, what are your guys' thoughts on this case what do you think happened to her do you think she's alive do you think she's dead what do you think happened and do you think i should keep making the disappearance videos let me know down in the comments below let me know what else you'd like to see. Because, uh, yeah. But yeah, that is the case of Tara Leah Coleco. Thank you for listening to this episode on the Murder House Radio Show. I hope you have a good rest of your Friday, or whenever you are listening to this. Please check out the social medias and the sources in the description below. Make sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe. Once you subscribe, hit the bell notification and select all to get all notifications if you are viewing on YouTube. Also give it a share and hit the follow button 
if you're listening on a podcasting platform. But until next time, this is your host X, signing off.